Greetings and welcome back to Switch to Linux. We are going to uh, do a panel discussion with telecommunication, but uh, I actually completely forgot to set up the title. So you will be able to hear everybody, you just won't be able to see them until I fix my title. So hello, everybody. Hello. Hey. All right. Hi. So let's get my title working. What should I call this thing? Let's just grab the stream title if I can. I think I distracted you too much about our website talk. Oh, that's okay. That's no problem. I just have a list of things that I'm supposed to get done before I start streaming, and every now and again I will forget some of them. And so we are joined by a bunch of guys. Ah, my... GIMP keeps on, I, I keep on moving the mouse out of the way and it messes up where I'm lowering the fonts. <laughs> <laughs> you, do oh, titles, well. you do titles in OBS, right? Um, I actually, I do them in GIMP. My titles are done in GIMP as transparent pings and then they work as overlays because I have one folder where my titles go and then OBS just pulls out of that title list. Yeah. So. Um, all I have to do is that, and then... I need to create titles. I haven't done that yet. Let's see. Hey, there's everybody, except my title's not on, so i got to fix my title now again. Every now and again, when I reset the title, when OBS is already running, it doesn't pull the title file. There it goes. Woohoo! Now we're back. Greetings. Hello, everybody. Greetings there. So we have Ben, we have... Brian and we have Quint on for a discussion on the future of phone and email communications. Hopefully Sleepy jumps on. He gave us one of our primary articles here. So, um, But greetings. How is everybody today? I'm good. Doing well. Doing good. Doing good. Doing well, doing well. And Brian just got finished fighting with a computer. Mm -hmm. Duked it out. Or uh, yep. Ben did. Brian, you too? You were fighting with computers also? I think we all fight with computers in what is, we do. This is true. This is true. Yeah, I still do, even though this computer works 99% of the time, I still have to fight with stuff. <laughs> Absolutely. Like the Absolutely. Bluetooth, where it just randomly disconnects. It's an issue with Fedora. Mm, see, I mean, come on, man. No, no, that's fine. I'm actually on. Uh, I'm actually on Arch Labs on the other computer right now, and it's it's going okay. Yeah. I haven't all noticed you have any. Major All you have to do is plug, is just unplug the Bluetooth adapter and plug it back in. Yeah, my the meta key doesn't work right. So you click it, it goes down, displays the screen, then it pops back up again instantly. So kind of silly. Weird. All right, so we have Frost Ranger of the Frozen Realm is on our comments. Louie is here. Greetings, Louie. How's it going there? Um, Film Wasteland. Hello. Meow to you too. I don't remember seeing you before, Film, so welcome along. Uh, Gray Moon Linux, hello. I don't remember you either. Greetings. Dot says hello. Dot's on 8chan. 8chan or 4chan? I don't know. I don't have thoughts either way. Error42, how's it going there, Mr. Error? And Neo2929, uh, 29. greetings. John, how's it going there? And Jeff Hope, hello there. Phone and email. So last century, yes, pretty much. Oh, 8chan apparently is uncensored. Four, is 4chan even censored? I mean, I don't really have much experience on 4chan, but I cannot imagine an uncensored 4chan. I thought it was already uncensored. Do they have censoring over there? Anybody? Anybody? Bueller? Bueller? I've not been to 4chan in a long time. Yeah, I've been there once, maybe twice. I don't know. Clearly, I'm not a member of Anonymous. Uh, but... <laughs> Uh, so, uh, we are going to be talking today about the future of f uh, phone and email communications. And so, oh, really? My article view is, I got to fix my article view too. Apparently, my, <laughs> apparently I need to fix everything these days. You didn't set anything up. Apparently, I didn't. See, Quint, you distracted me too much. I mean, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we are going to start out, and uh, this was, I don't know if this is an, a real legitimate article or just an advertisement, uh, but back in December, here's why you're getting so many spam phone calls. I read the vast majority of this article, and I don't remember seeing any explanation about why we're getting so many spammy phone calls, quite honestly. Um, but anyway, uh, what they are expecting is this year, nearly half of the phone calls made around the world are going to be spam. Maybe it's about time we just turn off our phones. I don't know. What do you guys think? <laughs> yeah, my phone is dead. I forgot to charge it last night. Yeah. 
awesome. Nothing here. So, and I get so many spam phone calls. It's yeah, my, incredible. I don't get a ton because I haven't had the number that I have for very long, but my mom gets a ton. Mm -hmm. And it's even worse when you have a, like a public presence. And so I'll talk about what I do to kind of protect my numbers there in a minute. Brian, you were saying something else? Yeah. In fact, interesting. Um, I want to play a message I got about a half an hour ago. Oh, sweet. It, it, it relates to what we're talking about so well. All right. Uh, well, you're queuing that up. Is it ready? You're going to need a minute? Has been breached. Before using any Apple device, please contact Apple Support Advisor. Press 1 to connect with Apple Support Advisor. Press 2 to listen to this message again. Or if you wish to contact us later, please call us on our toll-free number, 646-779-4978. Thank you. Let me Just guess. That's, a, that's an Android device, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> and it's so apropos, Apple customer service calling an Android device. <laughs> a that's surprising number of people that are going to fall for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and that's kind of where it, it gets to is, is how many of them. Um, I think I actually got a spam junk Patreon email the other day, which was kind of the first time I've seen one of those. What? How does um, that work? Um, uh, I, well, it's just like it's just like they're so, so common to find, you know, a UPS message. Ooh, a package is waiting for you. Click here or a FedEx or or a Google or a Microsoft. Because so many people have these accounts, you just go fishing with it. It's just it's throwing out bait, and then, you know, they'll reel something in. And Ooh. some of them are so good that I have to look at them a few times over and make sure that they're legit. Look at the um, email address. That's the main thing. Well, you can't. You can't look at the email address because it's too they, easy to spam an email address. Um, you can spoof, spoof those easy. You can, if you look at the message headers, you can look at the IP address, but that generally isn't the case. The only time that has been useful for me is when you get the recent campaign going around like, ooh, we caught you on the internet doing bad things and we have video of it, right? As if yeah. I would get on the internet with bad things on a, with a webcam pointing at me, but you know, some people do. Um, but they're like, see, we've hacked your email. So you look at the message source. Well, I know the IP address of my email server. And I look at the, the IP address like, oh, well, this is some server in Mexico. Clearly, it's not my email server. So no, they didn't hack into my server. You got to check that stuff every now and again. But what you do is you look at where the links go. And if the links aren't legit, that's how you know it's not legit. Like, you know, usually if there's short links, like I know Microsoft short link, I think it's go.microsoft.com is all of their links. Mm -hmm. Google has g.co. It's just good to look at those short links. Those are the main ones. Mm -hmm. and, and apparently the Patreon look. safety and trust team is looking at my site, my Patreon page. Apparently I'm, I don't know. But this, yeah, see, these look legit here. But I've gotten two emails about that. Apparently, apparently every, yeah, in fact, I got the other one exactly 24 hours ago. So apparently every 24 hours, the Patreon safety and trust team is looking at my stuff. I should go post something horrible over there and see if they, they call me out. Um, they would get mad at you if you put a link to Think Life Media on there. I don't know. I should. That would be fun. Support me over here instead, folks. Use Think Life Media. <laughs> yeah. um, ben, what's your thoughts on all of this fun, spammy phone calls? Well, it's funny. <clears throat> Back in pretty much between Halloween and maybe New Year's, I had three or four of those a day, and then they just stopped. Mm -hmm. And it was well. It, it some of them were like you know brought with a Brian's you know tech support thing. I, I I never got a you know an Android you know tech support for my iPhone or the reverse of what he did. But you know most of them are hey you've won a cruise or hey, call this number to, mm -hmm. to you know, claim your prize. Or I got a bunch that were in all Chinese and I couldn't figure that one out. Mm -hmm. But like yeah. this stuff is going to continue until it's too expensive to let it continue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why I think it's it would be best to have a protocol in place to... I mean, frankly, the, there is like one use case which causes spoofing to be illegal at all. And it was like, oh, we need to do this. And it's for debt collectors. Like, dude, let the debt collectors suffer. Most of them are trash anyway. 
Um, and oh. there's other means that you can legally collect your debt. But that's literally what they're using as a means to legalize spoofing numbers. If uh, All we need to do is make it illegal to spoof numbers. Really. Um, one, I forgot to mention the, what the messages that I have gotten are about student loans. And it's all because my area code wasn't introduced until 2010. Hmm. Yeah. Which that's why it's all about student loans because they assume it's a younger generation, which for the most part it is. Well, it's not necessarily. Um, I think the student loan ones are making another round. I can tell because the my student loan scammer video has had a, an uptick of views recently on my analytics. And so this, I think the student loan scams are going around again. Of course, we're going to see an uptick of the IRS scams uh, in the next couple of uh, next couple of weeks and months as well. Um, so which, uh, uh, Ben, you've, you've gotten the Caribbean cruise ones, right? You said, oh yeah. 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 Those so that, were big, what last year or the year before well, that? Actually it's, it's, um, they cycle. Um, I actually did a lot of tracking and research on this. It's basically one company that is literally, it's like set up a mile out of United States jurisdiction it is that close. And all they do is they target these for doing, um, um, timeshares, but it starts there. So they, there's really nothing in do about it. Well, it's actually the same group of people. They just keep on changing their corporation. They dissolve their corporation and rechange it about every six to eight months. Um, and then they charge, they, they give you quote the free vacation, but it's, they keep on adding little things up until it's just under that point. It's literally within $10 of what the credit card companies look at to make sure it's not fraud. And so that's how they get away with it. Every six months or so, they change everything. And uh, I've actually gone back and done screenshots looking at all of their properties as they've changed because I've gotten those the most. And they're literally using the exact same templates, the exact same everything. They're just changing the logo and the name. It's kind of funny. <laughs> what happens is nobody really ever gets this far because nobody pays anything who's like doing the scam bait. But what happens, like if it's a cruise, what do they say when you get to the point where you provide all the information and then they have to admit that it's a scam? Well, no, no. Um, like like what happens to to us on our end or what happens on yeah, their end? Yeah, what happens to you to you when, they, when you pay everything and they finally admit? Because you know if you're going to do a cruise, it's not going to be an actual cruise. So what do okay. they do? All right. So, no. So so it's, it's a quasi-legitimate thing. What it is is they are connected to a timeshare company, which I believe operates out of Key West. Um, which is in United States jurisdiction, if I remember. Um, but what happens is that company outsources all of these illegally collected phone numbers and mailing lists to this third party that's just outside of United States jurisdiction. So if you complain about it, they say there's nothing you can do. I know I actually have letters back from the uh, attorney general's office indicating, oh, there's nothing we can do. I'm like, dude, I tracked down and did everything for you. Why don't you work with some international partners and close these guys down? But, you know, they won't, don't want to do that. Um, so that's kind of that's kind of where so, where they're at. So what happens is, is they call you up and they give you the spiel. And if you agree to it, they literally take money out of your account and you legitimately get um, timeshare access, which is the worst thing you can possibly do. Uh, but that's kind of what they're what they're focusing on and what they're doing. So the part that makes it illegal is that uh, they're contacting people on federal no call lists and they've been caught a couple of times, but they pay a little fee, dissolve the corporation and then respin it up. The same exact thing that uh, Cambridge Analytica did. Every, you know, all of those guys, they claim bankruptcy, they dissolve the country company and all of the guys that were in it, they just spun up the exact same company under a different corporate name, which should be completely illegal, but it's not. Um, so that's kind of the case. So this article doesn't really go into why we're getting this. It's more or less an advertisement for Pixel and this new device. And this brings me to kind of the scary part where now we have to rely on Google and all of these services to screen our calls. So would you guys turn on the Google Assistant for call screening? Yes, no, maybe. What do you guys think? 
I think it's built into my phone. You know, the Google Dialer app, the one that I have, has it built in. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure, I don't know how, I guess I could change the dialer. I've changed pretty much all the apps mm-hmm. on my phone except the dialer. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, Brian, what do you think? Yeah, for my cell phone, I don't really know if I have to because there's only like three people in the whole world that have the phone number to my cell phone. And if it rings, if I don't know who it is, I just don't pick up. Okay. And I let them leave a message like I did with these Apple, you know, people. So I don't know if I really need a screener because there's only three numbers I got to remember. And if it's not one of those numbers, forget it. I'm not answering. So you just say, hey, if it's not in my contact list, it ain't getting answered. Right. Exactly. Now that I remember, I did replace the dialer app to the stock one. And so I'm not getting it, which doesn't bother me. Okay. Uh, Ben, what do you think? No, I'm with Brian. That's about what I do. If I don't recognize Mm -hmm. the number, I don't answer unless I'm, you know, unless I do that by accident or, I mean, I only need Mm -hmm. to keep track of maybe a dozen real phone numbers. Yeah. So... Yeah. So for me, it's the unfortunate thing is when you run a freelance business, you kind of need to pick up the phone when it calls. Right. And that's <laughs> running out problem. giving business cards and things. So what I do is on like all of my public stuff, if you find my phone number attached to my website and things, you'll notice that it is it is actually a number from another state. And that number is actually a Google number. So that is one of those cases yeah. where I use a Google service. So that number, when you ring it in, it will basically, it is kind of a de facto screener because what ends up happening is when you ring that number during certain business times, it rings my phone. Now I have the choice to click to answer it or not answer it at that point in time, or they can leave a message. If they leave a message, I get an email transcript and an email uh, WAV file or an MP3 rather with the copy of the message. So it looks really good. So what I end up doing is my one number that I've had for like 20 years basically ended up on every scam list, which I think had to do with the data breach from Maricopa College in Arizona because they were security morons um, and kept inappropriate amounts of data for inappropriate amounts of time. So that information was stolen. So that number, it was over a dozen a day. And then you have the book publisher scams. Jeff, are you still on? Because I know you're interested in books and stuff. So... There is a slimy little publishing company that I didn't know really existed. But when I published my first book, the publisher I went with, I had no idea, but they were contracting all their work out to a third party company called Author Solutions. Well, Author Solutions end up being sold to a company in Singapore who then just basically took all the data and sold it. So every bit of information that was attached to that publishing company is basically just out there and I'm getting constant spammy, scammy stuff from all sorts of subsidiary quasi-publishers that are spun up out of author solutions to try and harvest more money out of stupid, you know, stupidity and stuff. Yeah. And so with that number, I wanted to keep it because there's some people that that's really the only number they knew. And so I end up paying 20 bucks to port that to Google. So now that is on a Google service that does not actually ring any of my phones but it screens out a lot of stuff and I can still get some important calls on it. Um, and so yeah. that's kind of what I've done. I um, have Google voice also, and I really like it. Mm-hmm. I obviously, I got a number from Google, Yeah, but it's, this, it's the same area code as my phone number. And so um, that's just what I pretty much give to anyone, like a website that needs my mm-hmm. phone number. I give yep. my Google voice. Yeah. Um, yeah, for my business, my my medical practice phone number, of course, it's got to be a public facing number and that's on a landline and I don't really deal much with that, you know, Julie deals with that, but we have a service called Nomo Robo that's available through our ISP because we have um VOIP for our phone. We have it through our ISP. 
And uh, so that does a really good job of screening out a lot of crank calls. And otherwise, Julie's got a pretty good idea, you know, when she looks at the number, if it's an if it's a legitimate call or not, simply because she works the phone so much. If it's a legitimate call, she gets it. If she has any doubt at all, she lets it go. And we could hear if they leave a message and if they start leaving a legitimate message, she could then decide whether to pick it up or to just let them leave a message and then get back to them at a later mm -hmm. time. So that's yeah. how we handle our business phone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, yeah. So when you have a business, unfortunately, you have to run things a little bit different. So, of course, what does the FCC have to say? Let me make sure the article ah, it keeps on changing the window. This doesn't actually happen. Let's see. Why does it keep doing this? No, not that. I'm just messing up everything today, apparently. That goes to that one. Where do I need article view? You have the YouTube thing up right now. Yeah, I know. I don't know. It keeps on jumping over to that view. It never used to do that, but... Uh, it's maybe it's because I'm using Firefox and it's possible that when I'm using Firefox for the for the hangout and I'm using Waterfox for the uh, for the articles, it might be mixing itself up because they use similar code. Uh, but anyway, what we're looking at here is, hey, what does uh, what does the and um, eh, what does this <clears throat> guy <clears throat> at the FCC have to say? Of course, uh, they're talking about unwanted calls, including illegal and spoofed robocalls, the FCC's top consumer complaint and our top consumer protection priority. They're not doing a very good job of it. Um, in addition, complaints are on the rise from the numbers who are being spoofed and whose calls are being mistakenly blocked or labeled as possible scams by robocall blocking app or service. They're, they're committed to doing what they can. They just won't too much money for them to not. Uh, but anyway, they have some consumer tips. Let's talk through these tips and see if these tips are, are useful or not. All right. Number one, don't answer calls from unknown numbers. Most of you guys said you're already doing that, right? So yeah. mm -hmm. good. All right. So you, uh, number two, you may not know right away if an incoming call is spoofed. Be aware, a caller ID showing a local number does not necessarily mean it's a local caller. And this leads to fun stuff. I remember when somebody was spoofing my number for robocalling. That was fun. I'd have people calling me up. Matt, why do you keep calling me? No, I'm not calling you, lady. It is robots calling you. No, it's this number. Okay, never mind. I'm not talking to you, woman. Goodbye. <laughs> you know? did, did you, do people actually do that? Oh, oh, you have no idea. You have no yep. idea. Um, but yeah, yeah. So, um, but so, yeah. Okay, if you answer the phone and the caller or recorder asks you to hit a button to stop getting the calls, you should just hang up. This actually changed. Not long ago, they would tell you to hit the button. And you don't want to hit the button. That's you don't want to hit the button. You don't want to hit the button. You don't want to say yes. You just want to... You know, if you got an air horn, you know, um, make some make some poor call center person deaf for a little bit. There you go. Um, it's not really their fault. They're just doing what they can. But um, I just need to set them up on a PBX and play awful hold music. Yep. Please hold. That would really annoy them. Um. Let's see. Do not respond to any questions, especially those that can be answered with a yes. <laughs> Correct. You never tell these guys yes. Just say the opposite of no. <laughs> uh-uh. Or, you know, hmm? Or surely, you know, whatever. Um, never give out personally. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some guy's going to call you up, and I'm just going to give them my information. I got. I had one guy. I got this guy. I was messing with him. He was on the phone for like a good 10 minutes or so. And finally, I'm like, yep, I'm going to give him a credit card number. I'm like, you ready? He's like, yeah. One, two, three, about six, he hung up on me. <laughs> um, hey, Sleepy, how's it going? Hi, guys. How's everyone? Oh, good. How's the, uh, how's the weather up there? Oh, it's warm today. Probably uh, going to hit 80, I reckon, for you guys. 80 yeah, Fahrenheit. we... Uh, they, uh, our school in our town, uh, school in our town had an early dismissal because it about 
about one, one or two o'clock, it started dropping below freezing and everything was going to turn into the black ice all over the road. So they let the kids out early. Right. So, yeah. Um, we still, it still hasn't snowed here. It's, got, it's gotten really cold. It's like into the 30s, but no snow yet. Oh, shut up. It's was it was like negative eight for like a couple of days, man. Um, <laughs> it was only seventy three here. Oh, so oh seventy three. We don't tend to get snow until like late January, early February. Yeah. Ben, how's the weather at your place? Uh, we went from one Fahrenheit just a couple of days ago to fifty five today. Oh, huh. nice. We, we started about 40, and then we dropped down. It's probably about, let's see, what's my weather thing? My weather thing says it's only 28, which is actually still gorgeous. Yeah, um, Sunday it was it was half blizzard. Right now it's torrential flooding. Oh, almost. there you go. Yeah. Um, okay, so. Let's see. If you get an inquiry from somebody who says they represent a company or government agency or Apple Care. <laughs> Hang up and call the number on the account statement. This was one where I actually got a call and they're like from the bank, whatever. And so they're like, you know, whatever. And so I just hung up on them, pull up the card, call them back. And it was actually legit that time. That was when the GameStop event had happened. I had bought a uh, used device at GameStop. And wouldn't you know it, the one time in six months I actually used my debit card, some schmuck stole it and attempted to steal $1,500 from my account. So that was legitimately the bank calling, but that's what I did. I hung up and I called the number on the back of the card and got it squared away. So that's a good tip. Use caution if you're being pressured for information immediately. Yeah. Um, if you have a voicemail with your phone service, this is a good one. If you have a voicemail with your phone service, make sure you set a password to it. Some of your default phone services, like at Verizon, the default might be um, might be 0000. So if you've got to log in there and set a password or else somebody can spoof your number or just call you and steal your inbox from you. That's exciting. Um, talk to your phone company about blocking tools. Um, this is a good one because some of the companies are now starting to offer more free services to block them. Verizon's used to cost money. Now it's actually a free service. But I'm not, I'm opposed to the ones that will require you to download an app. I'm not into that. Yeah. Um, so that's that. Um, Let's see. Let's go ahead and jump on over. So uh, Vince actually sent this article to me, which inspired uh, inspired this. So how phone companies are finally verifying caller ID. So is this going to help us out? Uh, Vince, you want to give us a rundown of this one? Uh, it's more uh, with you guys in America that this is happening, isn't it? Uh, according uh, to the it article like there. It, yeah, yeah they're, they're now introducing a service. Well, I don't, I don't, I read it, but I don't fully understand how it actually is going to work. But um, they're going to uh, initiate some sort of a, a certificate, a security certificate, much like how um, HTTPS uh, mm -hmm. works, so that you can verify if. So each phone number uh, is going to be linked to some, some sort of a secure certificate. So if a phone company doesn't recognize that number and doesn't ver can't verify a certificate it'll actually come up on your phone as saying uh, phone number unverified or something like that. But um, when you read through the article, the best thing about the article is what they're going to call it. <laughs> and that's that's mainly the reason why I sent it to you. Stir and shaken. They're going to call it uh, stir shaken. Yeah. That's honestly a really good idea to have a TLS certificate style mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. A number. And for me, the only downside I saw to this is it's like it has to be a protocol built into some of these phones. And so the Pixels, of course, do it. Um, Galaxy S9 is going to be doing it. Probably your Apple devices as well, um, although they haven't commented otherwise. But for me, it's like, OK, I'm trying to get away from the big services. <laughs> so I don't really well, want to still, download apps or use those. Do you but think we'll it will still support it even if you put lineage on your phone? Um, I don't know because I don't know how this is going to be implemented. If it is if something, it's software, yeah, if it's something uh, that is implemented like HTTPS, then yes, it should be able to be usable. But you know, if you're on T-Mobile and have a Galaxy S9, so in other words, I am on a, the most expensive cell carrier and I have a brand new expensive phone that's probably on my Cadillac payment plan, then I can actually have these guys blocked. It's just easier to not answer the phone. <laughs> yeah, so from what I understand with the article, it only works on T-Mobile now. They have, to, they have to do something to make it work on the other carriers. 
Correct. So I, I, yeah. That's what I got from reading it also. So, um, but it's a, it's a step in the right direction. I like the concept. I like the direction they're going to try and verify the numbers. And that's a good thing. But I, I mean, I just still think it'd be easier to just, hey, let's just block spoof numbers. I mean, there's an option, you know. Um, yeah. because I think you guys may have already touched on that. But there are, there are apps that do that. But I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure those apps, I've tried them before. Yeah, it's... I'm just concerned about grabbing an app that's going to interact with that because with all this data collection, who knows what the world of things is going to do. I just wish so much stuff was reliable on apps. Like this speaker right here, Any this, this is a Christmas present. Anytime you turn it on, it says it's a blue, it's just a regular old Bluetooth speaker. But anytime you turn it on, it says to get started, download the Bose Connect app. It's like, no. <laughs> Which I use it without the app. I've never installed the app, and it works just fine. Mm -hmm. It's for data collection, I assume. So, yeah. So then what's the app used for? I mean, maybe advanced configuration. It's usually for, like, use. volume controls, like advanced volume controls. Hmm. That's have, it. So does non-advanced volume controls work? <laughs> yeah, well, everything works fine. I have okay. not had a single issue with it, but they want you to download the app. But it's used mm -hmm. for, like... It probably doesn't even do anything. It's probably just a data collector. Probably. In fact, uh, Bose was actually one of the ones. Oh, see right there. It just jumped over my, just jumped over to a different to my uh, different window. Yeah. Again. I was gonna move over here. It seems to me like if I mo slide this out of the way, it does that. It seems to be. But if I remember if correctly, I, can... I think Bose was getting involved in in data collection. So let me see if I can find any info on that. Yeah, here. Let me see. It probably uh, says in the menu right here. Here, um, good. Right here, that. Oh, hold on a second. Oh yeah, okay. There you go. Yep, yep. Download our app. Okay, so. All right, let me get back to article view. Why does it keep doing that? Yes, yeah, so it says download the Bose Connect app. Connect to power, and press power, and then the app will recognize it but it works okay. fine it's just a normal bluetooth here's, speaker here's i have not used the app it might i don't know my guess okay so here uh both data collection uh this is from uh almost two years ago now uh, i've read online at Bose wireless headphones capture data about what i'm listening to and send it to Bose or some other company for data mining i don't have any idea if this is true if it's true is there any way to opt out um, so the accepted solution, you can opt out by deleting the Bose Connect app on your device. You will lose things like Bose Share, Auto Off Timer, and Control over Volume Prompts, but appears the app also collects data as to what you're listening to. It seems like Bose has decided to use customers as lab rats in order to see what kind of things they listen to when using Bose products. Not sure that the whole selling customer habits to data miners is true, but it could be. It'll be interesting to see how this whole thing develops. So, yeah, this is a discussion I remember having a uh, doing some news articles on that a uh, while back, actually. It doesn't um, even mention anywhere on the box. Or that's the only place it mentions that it's a Bluetooth speaker, which they probably have to put it right there on the tag. Yeah. That's yeah. the only place in the entire box that it mentions that yeah. it uses Bluetooth. Wow. I never installed the app, so they're not collecting what I listen to. Yep. Um, that's good. Yeah. And it's good that they have the option. It's just, I wonder how many people realize that you don't have to use the app to download it. I don't know. Um, so uh, what do you guys think about that? Uh, do you have Bluetooth speakers? Do you use apps for them? What do you guys think? I'm very a Bluetooth speaker. <clears throat> oh. it, it, it's a... Uh, it's one of the Ryobi, they use the power tool batteries. It's dumb as rocks. It has a Bluetooth receiver and an aux input, and that's it. Sweet. Very yeah, nice. I'm very, very suspicious of anything that requires an app. I have uh, one computer where I have Bluetooth headphones, but there's no app on anything because I I'm running it off a laptop, you know, computer that I use basically as a television. So I play music on it that I have stored on my hard drive. I don't even really do much else with it. So those are like dumb Bluetooth headphones. Um, everything else I have, all my other wireless headphones, believe it or not, they're the old RF kind. 
you know, where it transmits the signal over like FM radio and you tune it in. Um, I'm not really big on Bluetooth that much, especially if it needs an app. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Bluetooth is not known for its security. <laughs> so. Yeah, I do use the hands-free Bluetooth in my car mm -hmm. for my phone. Yeah. But then again, the only person I I ever talk to, you know, when I'm driving, it's only one person I really talk to. And that's my wife. Yeah. You know, yeah. any anybody else calls, I just let it go. Yeah. So I don't go. talk a whole lot. Yeah. I so said your car, Tom, your car really doesn't even have... No. Any uh, of the hold infotainment on, hold on. Quint, uh, Go with Vince. Vince, what are you going to say? I, know, I was just going to say that at least the saving grace with Bluetooth is it's short range. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. Uh, it's pretty hard to intercept Correct. unless you're right next to the person. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Go ahead, Quint. Um, I assume you, your car doesn't have an infotainment system because I know uh, you don't like that. And you have an older car, right? Nope. Yes, I do. And I like it that way. <laughs> I, I'm a little concerned. This might be the year of having to get a new one, but uh, we'll see. You see can just get the most, if you don't connect it to anything, it's usually fine. The problem with a lot of your modern cars is they connect to Wi-Fi's randomly anyway because the company wants all that data. But we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Um, I want to check in on comments now. So if anybody sees any particular comments you want to comment on, go I'm going to go grab the speaker so I can show you when it turns on. It tell it like talks about it and everything. Uh, yeah. You'll see uh, how how they really really want you to do it. Let's see. So feel I am free, watching. Feel free to ignore my comments. I've I've been trolling the weather again, so. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. Okay. Okay. So why are we getting so many spam calls? I don't know. The article did not actually tell us why we're getting so many spam calls. I think it was just a an a uh, an a, an advertising piece from Google. Honestly. Um, let's see. I use Google Voice for my uh, d diaper and text messages, um, and it has saved my <clears throat> hiney a few times because I have an infinite capacity for saving messages. I'm in business for myself, so I have to pick up. That's where I'm at. Yep, yep. Uh, angry face from Jeff Hope, probably about uh, the books, uh, the publishing companies being jerks. Okay, I can actually watch, then listen, done with homework. All right, hey, welcome back, and I hope that you got your homework done well. Okay, I use Android and an iPhone. All right, so for Hangouts and OBS, do you just bring up a Hangouts session? Yes, Steve. Should I do another video, like another video on how I'm setting up my OBS feeds? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'll do that. Uh, but yeah, so uh, basically I'm calling up OBS as a web browser, and then I have a desktop audio, pulling the desktop audio feed in so the so you guys can hear them. I have my Meteor mic as a separate feed, so I have it all set up pretty nice. So yeah, that's uh, it's basically call, pulling up a uh, web browser that I have cropped appropriately. Okay, um, Technobismo on or one of his Discord mods on? Um, I don't know, I don't know. Okay, I've got the speaker. <laughs> Hold on, Gail. It's been so late. Hope all things been going well. Yes, indeed. I use Nomo Robo, which comes free with being in Comcast. It's great on the house phone, and we get a call, and Nomo Robo calls them immediately. And if it's a robot, it hangs up on them. Very good. Okay, let's see. Yeah, there's some weather, weather trolling back. Someone was, oh, someone was being mean on the. Hey, Anna Rita's here. Hi, Anna Rita. Where's my digital girl? All right. Okay. Use the computer speakers. Uh, get busy paying the bills, among other things. Yep, yep, yep. We all pay the bills. Wiped out my mate, and now I'm 100% on Peppermint 9 Respin. All right, Joe. Very cool. Peppermint 9. Yeah, yeah. I, I really like Peppermint 9. Yeah. You're, that's on your laptop, right? Yeah, it's on my laptop. Right. Still no one here. I can't get away from it. Steve's very own. Installed Elementary today and was not impressed. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I actually tried Elementary. I installed Pantheon on top of Debian. I hated it. Yeah. Something a little bit more open than elementary, but it's hey, still pretty Toss bad. Hey, Toss is on. Greetings, Toss. How are you? 
All right, total OS today is on. Are you still on uh, still on Windows? Or are you still on uh, Linux? There, Toss. I'm not sure what you're on, but uh, we'll see. If you're on Windows, you need to get off right now. Yeah, well, I mean, he's you know, he's. I think he's done with his Windows experiment, though. I think he's done with the Windows experiment. All right. Um. So I think the second part is email communications. So I didn't have any articles on this, but I want to know your guys' thoughts. What I've been seeing more and more is this kind of hostility toward running your own, um, kind of like running your own email servers. And everyone wants you on either Google or Yahoo for some reason. Only Yahoo's are over there. Um, and then... Um, uh, you know, of course, there's Microsofts and all these. So what are your guys' thoughts on on those, um, on the big corporate email servers? Do you use them? What do you use them for? Do you host your own? What are your thoughts? Ben, let's go ahead. Where's the there. Sorry. Uh, oh, <clears throat> I don't have the patience to host my own email server. Okay. I did that just nothing. I, I, right now, I use Gmail in the past you know, the late nineties, early two thousands, I was using Yahoo, but mm -hmm. I'd like to get off of Gmail, but eh, it's convenient if nothing else. Yeah. And I know that's sure. a bad reason, but mm -hmm. that's all right. It's all good. Uh, Brian, what do you think? Um, I got a few different email accounts. Um, I use a Juno email account for the medical practice and for the general family. Uh, because we've just had it for like 20 years and we're all used to it. And, you know, it's it's good as a shared email for like Julie and I and, you know, Scott to all mm -hmm. use. Uh, then I have a couple of Gmail and a Proton Mail that I use for my own uses. And then I have one through the school, you know, through Daytona State College. I don't know who they use. Um, but that's not really, well, it is mine. It's in my name, but it's through them. So mm -hmm. I just kind of borrow it as yeah. long as I'm teaching them. I don't know what Scott does. He does his own thing. Um, I know he has at least two Gmail accounts that he uses, but mm -hmm. I'm not sure. And he's got something through the school, you know, through the high school. Um, so we kind of use them. But again, I'm not all that happy with the fact that Google knows everything about everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Quint, what's up? Um, so I have my own email server now, which it took a while to get working, but um, I'm starting to move everything to that. And I have an email address on Zoho, which is, they're more of a business focused company, but I did that when I wanted to get rid of Gmail. I mm -hmm. still have Gmail for junk. And then um, I have a Gmail account with my school that's under their domain. It's like, a, it's a G Suite. And then my parents actually still have MindSpring email addresses. This one here. All right, um, Vince. Uh, I remember back in the day registering for so many, like as many free email accounts as I could because I knew that as one get filled up with spam, I have to switch to another one. <laughs> okay. I managed to keep a couple of main ones, keep a Yahoo one and a keep a Gmail one. The Yahoo one actually dates back I was just thinking about it. It dates back almost 20 years now. So I think I, I got that one, yeah. um, if they've been around that long. But I wanted to ask you, Tom, where, where is this, this hostility towards having your own uh, what, server what coming I'm, from? Because yeah, what I'm noticing, I'd love to have Yeah, what I'm noticing is when you're trying to interface. So if I email people on Gmail, oftentimes they don't get it or they get it much later. And which is funny because you can even set your own email server to have a record that confirms your email address with Google and they still are not necessarily liking that. Also, I'm noticing a lot of times if you have your own server, mostly because of spammers on shared servers, um, will get on blacklist. So like AOL's blacklist, I have to pull my server IP off of there like six or seven times. Um, that's the only one I've had to fight with super bad. But the funny thing is, it's like they keep on adding it back, but it's not like I don't share my email server. So I am the only person in the world with my IP address. And so I know it's not being spammed out somewhere else. So they keep on adding it. And I'm noticing 
we're going to see more and more of that because they want you on their own platforms rather than on your own. But frankly, your own is very reliable enough of the time that I don't want to deal with those. So I, and for me, the best way to run it is just get yourself a cPanel um, because email management on that is so simple. Attach a domain, attach a cPanel, dirt cheap, and uh, you can set up, depending on where your cPanel is from, you it can set cPanels for everybody. Um, it takes extra configuration to do it on Plesk like I did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yours, you have to fight with that certificate. I'm not sure why. But uh, the, the thing that I'm uh, concerned about is what do you, so you have to sign up for the hosting provider to with a cloud email address. Like what, what do you mean I with mean? a cloud email address? Like so I would have to sign up for DigitalOcean with my Gmail or, or my Zoho well, or something. Well, you can use other ones as well. You just have to make sure that you never have a lapse in hosting or that servers never go down or things like that. So that is a negative if you only have that. But, you know, I mean, there's other good options. Now, um, uh, I am Logic 83 and a couple other people. Oh, really? thing keeps on changing my article on me. It, I don't know why it keeps on jumping back to Chromium, but it wants to, keeps wanting to. Um, but a couple people have actually looked at this one and said this one's good. So this is MailFence, um, which I don't know anything about this, this uh, company, but feel free to check them out, research them, see if they are, are a good place to get your email. Um, so this is one, um, Proton Mail is another one. So I have a Proton Mail attached to one of my, um, one of my accounts. Uh, it's actually my uh, anonymous Amazon account that I use for anonymous Amazon testing. And uh, I use Proton Mail for that. So you can get a good security and privacy focused web mail as a, as an overall backup or maybe as a, um, uh, just as kind of a backup system. Um, that's kind of, if you need that web backup, that's the direction I'd go, Proton or maybe MailFence if it's good. A couple people here have confirmed it is good. So um, those are um, those are places where you might, and then just use those for backup and then use your own hosted. All it takes yeah. is a domain name, a hosting account, and you got email. So I have Proton VPN. I have not messed with Proton Mail, though. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. I just use the free Proton VPN when I need to test a VPN for something. Sure. Yeah. Um, mail fence is in Belgium, a 14 eyes country. I trust them more than Proton Mail is a so called neutral country, aka Switzerland. Let's see. So there's some, there's a little bit of debate going back and forth. Let's let's read the comments here on the debate. Let's see if we can make any sense. And if anybody does any anybody here, Ben, do you know anything about mail fence? Uh, no, I'm just reading the website right now yeah, for the first I've time. I've never heard of them, so. Okay, and Brian, you said you have a Proton, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I like it. It's not one of the ones I use a whole, whole lot, but I like it. Okay, to be honest with you, mail fence is in Belgium, a 14 eyes country, which is true. If it is in Belgium, Belgium is a 14 eyes country. Trust them. More than that, Proton Mail is a so-called neutral country. Um, well, I don't know. I think Swiss. I wouldn't call Switzerland a honeypot for the CIA. I'd call Switzerland the neutral ground of the history of the world. <laughs> Just like, <laughs> um, yeah. So I would. I don't know. Um, I'd have to look into both of them. I trust Switzerland overall i still don't use them for everything i use my own servers honestly okay so having an email server is beyond my iq okay yeah hosting company provides email there you go yep what's my opinion on tesonet data mining proton mail and proton vpn um i don't have any comment on it you guys have any knowledge on that what happened um, Tesonet data mining, Proton Mail, and Proton VPN. Um, I think TechLore might have addressed that, if I remember. I can't remember though. So, would you still recommend to use Proton Mail over the what other one? Over. I mean, I don't know enough about MailFence to tell you one way or the other. Um, 
I would use Proton Mail over Gmail for personal communications. Um, I really, I just need to set up another email address so that I can have the hosting account set up on. That's all I need. I need one that's more, that's a, just a private email address that I can like ha create the DigitalOcean account on. Yeah, I mean, can you do that through a Proton Mail type account? I probably could. Yeah. Currently, I think it's linked to my. I think it actually is linked to the server, but that's kind of mm -hmm. the, that I wouldn't because I used to have that email address on cloud email, and I never changed it. Mm -hmm. And then once I moved the Quint Five Tech email address onto my own server, yeah. I never changed it. So I probably should should set up another one. So Total OS today says I back up through Uncle Guido's server, but developers keep disappearing. That's right. Toss Toss keeps on having developers disappear. If anybody needs to do development work, don't do it for Toss because he's going to have you work with Uncle Guido and you'll just disappear. Um, let's see. Cool dude uses Tut Note. I don't know about Tut Note. That's another one. Yeah, I've heard of that one before. I think it's German, I want to say. Yeah, Vince. The. The server did fall off the back of the truck. It fell off the back of the truck. Went down by the and if you hear any noises, if you hear any noises from the back of the caddy, watch out. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The little back of the caddy's all cleaned up. All right. Uh, most ISPs let you keep their email. Look at how many people still have an AOL email. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know, though. Um, Verizon's been, uh, of course, this week they started laying off people from Oath, which is where AOL was rolled into. So, and they might just very well dissolve those. So keep an eye out for that. My, uh, my granddad has an AOL email. Yeah. I Means he was, all, he was my, early my onto the internet. Um, my parents have iCloud emails now, but they also have MindSpring emails. Oh, Gene! They just never bothered to cancel it. Yeah. Oh, Gene's kitty passed away. We are really sorry to hear that, man. That's not good. Um. <laughs> Let's see, seems very untrue, but still having an email connected to a company you no longer have is a bit too risky. Yeah, I agree. All right, I think we're going to do our kind of final comments here, and then we'll wrap this guy up. Now, I do have a, another stream coming up at 9 o'clock, which is about one hour on my Christian channel. And while these guys are doing their final words, I will go ahead and... Um, grab that link for you guys so go ahead uh, ben final thoughts um sorry i completely blanked oh that's okay Next. um <laughs> brian final thoughts okay well w one of your commenters commented about nomo robo which i also have for my business landline because the the medical practice is on a landline and that works really, really good. And I checked that out before I got it because a lot of times you can't even trust these types of companies because how many viruses masquerade as an antivirus program? So you really got to check things out carefully. That's really good. Cell phones are another kind of a different story. I personally don't like anything where you have to download an app, even if it's a security app again. You, you never know. So unless I hear a really good review on it from someone who knows what they're doing, I'm going to avoid anything like that. Fortunately for me, my contact list is short enough that I could keep it all in my head. And as far as emails go, I mean, the more you use biz, you know, the more you buy stuff online and the more you do with email, the more spam you're going to get. My main account, I get like it's like 80 percent spam at this point. Point. Mm -hmm. I just get on, spend an hour deleting crap, and maybe read yep. two or three emails out of 50. You know, yep. that's why I keep my other emails for my important stuff. Yep. And that's about it for me. Yep, that's true. Uh, ben, could you come up with something? Yeah. No, I just I had to think for a sec. Yep. The, uh, even if, like, let's, let's say we woke up tomorrow and, you know, th there's no more spam phone calls, there's no more spam email. Even if you, even if we wake up tomorrow and and we live in that world, be suspicious of 
you know, when you see things that don't look quite right in your email or you get phone calls that don't seem quite right, because I assure you, if you want to cruise, you'd, you'd have known you signed up for some kind of sweepstakes or something else. Yeah, yeah. What do you mean you didn't sign up? That's right. Um, Analog, thank you very much for that super chat. We are just in wrap-up mode, but uh, hang out for a few more minutes. Um, let's see, Quint, final words on your end. Um, switch to a cloud email. Or not cloud, don't use a cloud email provider. Switch, <laughs> switch to your own email. hosted email. Um, you, um, you switch to your own hosted email. Don't download apps to connect a speaker just because a speaker told you to. And, um, and just try to just try to keep your contact. Like I keep all my contacts in next cloud. Now just self host everything. That's the key. Self host everything. Yep. You will have security by obscurity. Nobody's going to know where to look for it. <laughs> <laughs> Part of that decentralizedness of the web. Vince, final words? I'm uh, unfortunately, Quint, not all of us are clever enough to be able to do that, but we'll, <laughs> we'll try. <laughs> but um, a, a friend of mine said to me that uh, he thought that voicemail was, um, was a dying uh, thing. But I, I, I disagree because it's the most useful thing for screening calls. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic. And that's what I use. I, I look at the number and screen calls. Um, I just want to be able to find some time to figure out some really clever ways to at this time i need to figure out some more ways yeah yeah absolutely um so... i uh, vince i could set it up for you if you want me to do that <laughs> i've done it so many times now yeah. you should you should you should charge for that service yeah if you're going to do it. yeah I, I mean, I, I do as well as part of my business. I actually set up, I mm. wish Dan was here today because uh, I actually set up Dan's email servers. Um, he's I really assume it's it. on a cPanel on A2 hosting, right? It is on a cPanel on A2 hosting because it works <laughs> very easy. Didn't have to fight with it. Um, so I mean, if, is, if the is, cloud services, if the cloud services are, you know, reading my emails for the, only the purpose of advertising to me, you know, I've lived with that for so long now. I guess it's not terrible but if anything that's really super secure no i'll keep it off my email yeah and that's why i'm not super duper concerned because email itself is a radically insecure protocol anyway um and so i don't do anything that's super sensitive on email um anyway but i don't want i don't want companies to be tracking data and advertising to me based on it that's why i you know do the way i do it um but that's the case. Okay, so Sutru wants to get a call saying, I want a vacation. Why well, no, I would never apply for, so I sure wouldn't come. You think it's possible that Microsoft purchased LinkedIn just to have another way into India since Bill Gates Foundation was kicked out? Possible. I don't know. Um, I didn't know they were kicked out of India. Hmm. Uh, have a domain with Namecheap and recently started getting hit with spam. Yes. Um, Namecheap is actually a GoDaddy company, and so, yeah, they just constantly stuff. I'm thinking about mine is on Hostinger right now. I personally don't really like them, but I'm thinking about moving it to um, I Want My Name. They seem like they're really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, check them out. We're going to feed the kitty. Oh, boy, kitty. Oh, boy, I know the kitty. name sounds pretty bad, but they seem like they're really good. Oh, boy, kitty. Go get a kitty. Okay. Oh, kitty time. Oh boy. Kitty's just like, I'm going in there, man. All right, buddy, here, I'll get you. I'll get you one. There you go. We'll get I you didn't two. Name What's cheap up? was GoDaddy in disguise. Yep. Yeah. You it gotta look mention down. anywhere that it's owned by uh, GoDaddy. Two cows. Two cows. Two cows is a GoDaddy company. GoDaddy's another one. You do any business with them, and they'll be emailing you for the rest of your life. Yep. Like I know, um, my mom has a domain on GoDaddy, but it's forwarded to a website, a mm -hmm. classic press website in DigitalOcean. And when I was trying to set up the DNS, when I was just pointing it to the def to the name servers, the NS1, NS2, and yeah, NS3, they, they're Digital like, Ocean, but you can keep it here. Stuff, yeah, all that stuff came up like, keep it here, keep it here. Yeah. Keep it here. It's best. Oh, no. no. The, the, what? Your name servers that just got hacked and has been used to 
do fishing bomb threats? Yeah, no, Dodo Daddy, I don't really want to do that. You can check out the video from yesterday to learn all about that. I do have the shorter version of it. Uh, my final word is the book Testing and Temptations is now rolled out as an audiobook everywhere. So if you guys are wanting to grab a copy of that, I will put in some links. There is an Audible link. That's an Audible US link. And I think there's some guys from UK here as well. So Audible UK link. And you guys that like Kobu, I will do a Kobu link. And what's that, Kobu? Yeah, that was Kobu. That is audiobooks.com and Amazon. And there's other places as well. But if you are interested in that book, Testing and Temptations, it has rolled out. It's an audiobook everywhere. So you can go ahead and um, grab that. Of course, the uh, ebooks and the soft covers are always out there as well. Is the new ebook coming out on Kobu website? Yes, it should be about a month or so. Um, though I am on the last final bits of editing. I will hopefully have the final edit out tomorrow. And then once that's done, so probably by Monday, I will start issuing the, um, the distribution files. And then once the distribution files hit, it will take anywhere from two to four weeks to get distributed. So Kobu um, should get out there probably a little bit sooner on the audiobook, a little bit later on the ebook, but I'll let you guys know. So that is that. Uh, once again, I will, be, um, I will be on the Christian channel in about an hour. So you guys can take a look. The link for that video is here. We will be talking about disagreement versus hate. What is the difference between disagreeing with somebody and hating someone? Because this is apparently a simple concept that nobody understands anymore. And we'll be talking about the uh, Covington High School case a little bit. So thanks for coming along, guys. And I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Bye. Bye-bye. Uh, Bye. Bye.